Hey everybody, today's lesson is about composite area. Um, so we're going to be finding the area of some composite shapes, but before, before we get into what composite shapes are and how we find the area of those composite shapes, you need to understand the basics of area. And there's a couple of parts of circles, since we haven't really covered circles too much, there's a couple of parts of circles that you need to know. Uh, and again, most of this stuff is review. Uh, you've done this before, it's probably just been a little while. So uh, we'll cover the um, stuff that you should already know how to do, and then we'll get into composite area. So the first thing we need to talk about is some parts of circles. Uh, if you don't know what a circle is, a circle is basically an infinite number of points that are the same distance away from a central point. So like if you look at this, a uh, circle up here at the top, all the points that follow along this uh, on the outside of the circle, they're all going to be the same distance away from that center. And that distance away from the center that all those points are uh, is the radius. Okay, the radius is the distance from the center to any point on the circle. Uh, it's also a segment. Uh, a chord, which is not going to be that important for today, but a chord is just connecting. It's a segment that connects any two points on uh, the circle. So like this chord over here in red connects these two points from the circle. That is a chord. And a chord that goes through this center, like this blue line right here, that is the diameter. So the diameter really kind of measures the width, if you will. Uh, and I put those in quotation marks because we don't really measure width necessarily, but that's kind of the width of the circle. Okay, it goes through the center. Uh, and so we've got two ways that we measure circles. We measure circles with radius and we measure circles with diameter. Now they are related to each other, if you don't already know, um, that the diameter is twice as long as the radius, since the radius goes from the circle to the center of the circle, and the radius, or the diameter, sorry, goes all the way across, then the radius is all gonna be half of the diameter, or the diameter is going to be double the radius, okay? So the diameter is double, the radius is half of the diameter. Because in, in some of these problems, when you're dealing with area especially, you're going to be using the radius to calculate the area. But sometimes you're going to be given the diameter. So what you'll need to do is divide that in half to get the radius, and then plug that radius number into your formulas. Now you should have got the uh, handout here that has all of the area formulas of the basic shapes here. These are basic two-dimensional shapes. Um, you'll notice on the left here, which is the top three on your sheet, um, these all have pretty much the same uh, calculations, okay? Because they're all parallelograms. A rectangle, a square, that's the same thing as a parallel. It is a parallelogram. Now, obviously, they got some different properties that a parallelogram doesn't have. But to figure out area, we're going to be taking the base times the height, okay? Now, it's important to understand when you're dealing with some of these shapes that have slanted sides like a, a parallelogram or the triangle or the trapezoid, Okay, you need to use the height. The height that you're going to use has to be perpendicular to your base. So perpendicular, again, means that you're meeting at a 90 degree angle. It's like in this parallelogram on the bottom left. We have to use this height. We can't use one of the sides. You know, we can't use that side or that side because it's not parallel, or I'm sorry, it's not perpendicular to this base that we're going to use. So we need something that's at a 90 degree angle to use for the height. Okay, now we can use the sides in a rectangle and a square because we have all 90 degree angles in those shapes. So we can use those sides because they meet at a 90 degree angle. So with rectangle squares and parallelograms, just base times the height, or in a square or rectangle, you can do length times width. Um, in a triangle, a triangle is half of a parallelogram. So we're gonna use the same base times height, but then we're gonna divide that by two because again, it's half of a parallelogram. Same with a trapezoid. A trapezoid though is half of a parallelogram when we add the two bases together. So that's how you're going to solve for the uh, trapezoid, is you're going to add the two bases together. Remember, the two bases are the sides that are parallel to each other. So in this case, it's the top and the bottom. You're rarely going to use either of these two sides to solve these area problems, okay? unless you have one that meets at a 90 degree angle. But again, we have to have that height that meets at a 90 degree angle to the bases. Okay? So we're going to add the two bases together, multiply by the height, and divide by 2. And then for circles, if we know the radius, uh, then all we have to do is do pi times the radius squared. Pi is that 3.14 number. We're actually going to use pi uh, as we calculate these, though. So make sure you're using pi. So I want you to take a, just a couple of minutes here, pause the video, and see if you can't solve these problems on your own. And then once you do, come back, and then we will uh, see if you got it right. 
So hopefully you solved all these already um, and you just want to check your answers. So this is a triangle in the first example. So what we have to do is we have to use the height of 5 along with the base of 14. Those are the two dimensions that we have that are perpendicular to each other. So to find the area of a triangle, all we do is base times height divided by 2. In this case, we're using the base of 14. We're going to multiply that by the height of 5, divide by 2. 14 times 5 is 70, divided by 2, which is 35. So the area of that triangle has to be 35. With your trapezoid, remember you have the formula, base 1 plus base 2 times your height, divided by 2. And again, I would highly recommend that when you all are solving these problems, write those uh, template equations down. Write those formulas down, and then all you have to do is plug in your numbers. Okay, so we can assume that these two sides are the bases because they are the ones that are parallel to each other. So we're going to plug that into our formula, 15 plus 23. We're going to multiply that by the height. Again, the height has to be 9. If you were given one of these other sides on the left or the right, you don't want to use that. you got to use the 9 because that's perpendicular to the bases. So that is our height, and we will uh, calculate that. Uh, now, it's important on this, by the way, when you're using your uh, calculator, that you don't just plug into the calculator. If you were to plug this in, look at the top here. If we just did this in the calculator, 15 plus 23 times 9 divided by 2, the calculator is going to figure this differently than what you had in mind. Okay, Because what it's going to do is it's going to do the PEMDAS stuff in order that it's supposed to. And it's going to take the multiplication first, and then it's going to do the division, and then it's going to add the 15 at the end. You do not want that. So if you're trying to plug all this into your calculator in one shot, you need to make sure you put parentheses around the bases because we need to add those together first before you multiply by the height. And then, uh, then you can start to multiply and divide. So what I would probably recommend that you do is just go ahead and add those two numbers together. 15 and 23 add up to 38. We'll take 38 times 9 and then divide by 2. 38 times 9 divided by 2 <clears throat> should be 171. So your area of this shape should be 171 units squared. And then for the circle or semicircle, actually, you know, if you use 10 as your radius, you did not get the correct answer. Because the radius, again, is going to be half. This 10 represents the diameter of the circle. It goes all the way across, right? So it's, that's basically the width. So we need to use a radius of 5, which is half of that diameter, okay? So when we figure out the... Uh, plug it into our formula, pi r squared, to figure out the area of the circle, we need to use 5 as the radius, okay? So we got pi times 5 squared, which is 25 times pi, because 5 squared is 25, multiply that by pi. If you're plugging that into your calculator, that would be 78.54, roughly. Now, if you ended there, you've also missed a key step, because how much of a, how much of a circle is this? It's only half. So what we've got to do, remember the area uh, of a circle formula only figures the area of a full circle given a particular radius. And since this is only half of a circle, we need to take that total that we just figured out and we need to divide by 2. Okay? Now you could start that off at the very beginning. You could do the pi r squared divided by 2 to remind you to do that at the end. That's a good idea to do that because it is only half of a circle. And if we take that number of our total, that 78.54 divided by 2, you should get a full area of 39.27, and that would be centimeters squared. So our area is 39.27 square centimeters. Now that we know the basics, let's get into composite shapes. Okay, Composite figures or composite shapes are basically just two flat shapes, two dimensional shapes combined into one. Okay, Think about like a floor plan of a house or floor plan of the school. right? If we wanted to, for instance, um, you know, change out the flooring in our school here, right? You could figure out uh, the area that we would need to cover with carpet or whatever flooring we were going to use, but the school is made up of several different rooms. So if we wanted to do the whole school, right, we would have to do part by part and figure out how much area each section takes up. So like each room is this much, each room is this much. You know, we'd have to figure out the hallways. And then at the end, once we figured out all the parts, we would add them all together. That's its composite area, okay? So what we're doing though, and when we're figuring out these composite area problems, we're separating a shape into two or three more shapes that we already know how to solve for because we only have those 
particular formulas to, to use to solve for area, right? We've got those six shapes that were on your handout. So we need to divide all of these composite figures into those shapes. And then we can just either add together or subtract. Sometimes we're going to be adding them all together. Sometimes we're going to be subtracting some out. Uh, and we'll go over a couple examples to show you how to do that. Okay. So here's an example of a composite figure where we're going to add some pieces together. Now, this is a hexagon. Okay. If you look at this whole shape as a, as a whole thing, okay, it's got six sides. Okay. That's a hexagon. But we don't have a formula that figures out that hexagon all in one shot. Okay, so what we need to do is separate that, and you may or may not be given these little lines here. Okay, so you're going to have to do that on your own, possibly. Separate this out into the shapes, and then figure those uh, separately, and then add them together. Okay, so in this case, we can separate this into two shapes. This is a rectangle on the top, and this is a trapezoid on the bottom. Okay, and since the whole hexagon contains both of those, we're just going to take those areas of those separate parts, and then we're just going to add them together. Okay, so let's solve this one. So if we want to find the area of the rectangle, again, we're going to do base times height, right, or length times width. In this case, the 23 and the 12 are the sides that we're going to be using for the base and the height. So the base is 23, the height is 12. It doesn't really matter which order it's in. And if we multiply those together, the area of that rectangle is 276 square centimeters. Okay, so this is 276. And then if we find the area of the trapezoid, again, we have that formula, right? We're adding the two bases together, multiplying by the height, divide by two. So base one plus base two times the height, divide by two. We've got the two bases. Now, keep in mind, this base right here that we need, that is also the same length as the other side of the rectangle. So our base here for this trapezoid, that top base is going to be 23. So we've got the two bases, the 23 and the 15, that we're going to plug in. So we've got 15 plus 23. We're going to multiply that by the height. Now, if you don't see the height here right off the bat, remember, the rectangle is going to be the same on either side of the rectangle, right? The sides are going to be the same length. So if the left-hand side of the rectangle is 12, then the right-hand side has to be 12, okay? And so then, if the entire height which is given to us as 18 centimeters of the hexagon, right? We're given the full 18 centimeters. That's the whole height of the hexagon. We need to take out the 12 to figure out what the height of the trapezoid is. So if we do the 18 minus the 12 that's there for the rectangle, whatever's left, which is six, has to represent the height of that trapezoid. So there's your height of your trapezoid, which is six. And that's what we're gonna use in our formula. So we got 38. Again, we're going to add the two bases together first. We're going to multiply that by 6, and then we're going to divide by 2. And you should get, I believe, 114. Yeah, 114 square centimeters. Okay. And again, since both of these parts are um, part of that hexagon, to total out the hexagon, we just need to add the two parts together. So we're going to take the area of the rectangle which is 276, and we're going to add in the area of the trapezoid, which is 114. So our total then would be 390 square centimeters. Okay, again, just separating them into two parts, add them together at the end, and that's the area of the complete shape. Now, we also have some where we're going to end up subtracting, where we have two or more shapes that we're end up taking away or subtracting some of the area from the original shape. Okay. So like here's an example where we're actually going to be subtracting because all we want to know is the area of this gray part, okay? And there are two shapes that are in play here. We have a square and we have a circle. And this gray part, if you'll notice, that's part of the square, okay? So what we can do then, if we want to know just that part, we can figure out the area of a complete square and then we can take away or subtract the area of the circle that's missing. Okay, it's kind of like we hole punched a card right here. We have the little area around it. We just want to know how what is the area of that little part. Well, that again, that's part of the square. We'll take away the circle, and that's going to give us our answer. So again, think about this process. Okay. Now, for your circle, keep in mind that 
this circle is, is exactly inscribed inside this square. Like, it fits exactly perfect. So that's, first of all, how we know this is a square, okay? Because if, if this circle goes edge to edge or side to side, if it extends all the way the width of that square, that tells us that di the uh, diameter of that circle is 25. And if we also draw the diameter vertically, well, th it's got to be the same diameter, right? All the way through the circle, no matter how many diameters we draw, each diameter has to be 25. So that has to be 25 as well. And since that uh, circle width, if you will, goes all the way from top to bottom of the square, then we know this side has to be 25 also for the square. That's how we can prove that it's a square. So now we've got our, our sides that we're going to use for the square. And then keep in mind with the circle, we have to use the radius. So the diameter, which goes all the way across the circle, is 25. We need to split that in half and use the radius of 12.5, because that is half of 25. So when we figure out the area of the circle, that's what we're going to use. So let's do it. So we got the area of the square that we need to figure out. Again, we can do base times height or side squared because the sides are the same length. So we got 25 times 25, which is 625 square feet. That is the area of the square. And the circle that's missing, we take the area of the circle. Again, we use the formula pi r squared. Our radius, as we talked about, is 12.5. So if we do pi times 12.5 squared, and if you put that in your calculator, pi times 12.5 squared, you should get a total of 490.87. And again, since the gray part is part of the square, but it's not part of the circle, we need to subtract the circle amount from the square. So we're going to take for the remainder or the gray area, we're going to take the 625 square feet of the square. We're going to subtract the 490.87 of the circle. And if you do that, you should get 134.13 square uh, feet, which is just the gray part. So that gray part should have an area of approximately 134 square feet. So hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, there are a couple of examples that you have on your notes as well. We're gonna run through those together really quickly. Um, we're not going to do this one. This is not in your notes, but that one's a kind of a fun one if you want to give it a go. But if you look at this one on the very top left, we can separate this into multiple shapes. And you might see different ways that you can separate it, and that's perfectly fine. You can separate this like three or four different ways. But what I see here is if I extend this line going all the way across right here that we see, that creates three different shapes here. We've got a quarter circle right here. It's a quarter circle in that little area. We've got a rectangle up on top. And then on the bottom, we've got a trapezoid, which, by the way, is a right trapezoid. There should be a right angle right there. Okay, so we can use this A for the height of the trapezoid. So if we're trying to figure out the area of this shape, we're just going to do three separate calculations for this, and then we're going to figure it out. Or we're going to add them all together, I'm sorry. So let's do the area of the rectangle first. So the area of the rectangle, again, this is just kind of a rectangle uh, symbol there. We're going to take the base times the height or length times the width. And in this case, we have a 8 height and a 12 width. So we're just going to multiply 12 times 8, which is 96. In the circle, again, keep in mind, this is a quarter circle. Okay, here's your 90 degree angle right there. That only makes up quarter of the circle. If you envision this thing going all the way around, the net three, as you can see, has to represent the radius of that circle that we only have part of the circle for. Okay, so that three is the radius. That's what we're going to end up using in our calculation. But you can see here, we only have a fourth of that circle. Okay, and we're going to get into that stuff uh, here later on and finding parts of circles in the next lesson. Uh, but just keep in mind, that's a fourth of a circle. So we're using the pi r squared formula. We got pi times, and again, we're going to end up dividing by 4 because this is only a fourth of a circle. So we're going to do pi r squared, and then we're going to divide that total by 4. So we'll do pi times 3 squared, which is 9 times pi divided by 4, and then 9 pi divided by 4 will be 7.07.
So that circle part is approximately 7.07. .07. If you figured out the whole area, it's going to be around 28 units for the whole circle. Remember, don't forget to divide by 4 because that's only fourth of the circle that's there. And then when we do the trapezoid, I'll just draw the trapezoid. We've got, again, the base 1 and the base 2 times the height divided by 2. Now, this one's a little bit tricky, okay, because the trapezoid, we have this length here. One of our bases is 12, but this is our other base right here, okay? And so we've got this piece of our base, which is 5. We've got this piece, which matches our top rectangle up here of 12, but this we have to add in as well. Okay, so we're going to have to add all three of these pieces together to get the base of that trapezoid. And since the radius of our circle is 3 this way, then the radius of our circle has to be 3 that way also. So if we add all three of these pieces together, that would be a distance of 20. So that's going to be your other base. So we've got 12 plus 20. We're going to take that. We're going to multiply by the height. Again, since we have a right angle here, our height of our trapezoid would be 8. And then we're going to divide by 2. So 12 and 20 is 32. If we add that together, multiply that by 8 and divide by 2, you should get 128 units. And then for the total, we're going to take them all. We're going to take the rectangle, which is 96. We're going to take the circle part, which is 7.07. .07. We've got the area of the trapezoid, which is 128. And all together, that should be a total of 231.07 uh, square feet. So that is the total for that composite figure right up there. Again, we separated it out into shapes that we know. Now, that trapezoid, by the way, you could have separated that into another rectangle and a triangle if you wanted to. It just, it just adds another calculation you would have to do, okay? So the more shapes you're dividing these into, the more separate calculations you're going to have to do before you start adding them or subtracting them, okay? Now, with this last one on the bottom, I know I've kind of covered it up here in the video. Um, keep in mind, we've got two shapes here. Well, we've got three shapes. We've got a big rectangle, okay? And we're going to be trying to solve for the gray part here. So we're going to end up subtracting some stuff out. But we got this big rectangle that the gray part is part of. And then we've got these four little quarter circles here, which are all the same size. So it's making one small circle. And then we've got one big circle in the middle. So we're going to be taking, since that gray part is still left, that's the remainder of that rectangle. After we take out the two circles, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the rectangle. We're going to subtract both of the areas of those circles out and then uh, that will leave what's left. Now, this is a little bit tricky because we need to find the whole length. For this rectangle, we need the whole length of the side because what we're given is just the, the lengths of those gray parts. But if you keep in mind, if that circle, the little small circle, are all three radius, then all these little pieces have to be three, and we need to add those threes on to the other stuff that we have. So, like, if this part is 12, okay, then we need to add the 3 on, so that whole uh, side has to be 18. We've got to add the 3 from the top, we've got to add the 12 here in the middle, and then we've got to add that 3 on the bottom part. Same thing on the, uh, the length of this side here. We've got 22, we've got another 3 over here, we've got another 3 over here. We need to add all that together for the length of that rectangle, which would be 28. So we've got a 28 by 18 rectangle that we're going to be subtracting from. So to figure out the area of the rectangle, Again, we do base times height, which is simply that 28 times 18. And 28 times 18, if you put that into your calculator, it should be 504, 504 square units. We've got a big circle. So if you want the big circle, again, we're going to use pi r squared. Now, this one, uh, we got to figure out what the radius is, okay? Now, we already figured out the height of this rectangle, which is the same as the diameter. I'm going to change colors on this here. That's the same as this diameter of the circle, okay? So that diameter has to be 18 of the circle. Well, again, if we're figuring out the area, we've got to use the radius, and the radius is going to be half of that because it's going to go from the center of the circle all the way to the top, and that radius is going to be 9. So that's what we have to use in our calculations. So when we plug that in, we've got pi times 9 squared, 
and that's 81 times pi, which is uh, approximately 254.5, we'll call it, just to simplify it. And that's the area of the big circle. And then if we want to find the area of the small circle, we'll change colors again here to red. Again, we've got this small circle here that has a radius of three. Again, this is a quarter circle, each one, which makes up one circle. Each one of these quarter circles will add up to one circle. So we just have to do one calculation. But that three has to represent the radius of that circle. Okay. So again, for the small circle, we do pi r squared. Our radius is three. So pi times three squared is nine times pi. Oops. And 9 times pi is 28.27. So to figure out the total of the gray area, we just got to take the uh, entire rectangle of 504, subtract out the big circle of 254.5, and then subtract out uh, the, the small circle, which will uh, round it. We'll round that to 28.3 just to make it a little easier. So 504 minus those two. 254.5 minus 28.3. It's approximately 221.2 square units. And that's what's left when we take out those circles, and that's the area of the gray portion. So that is composite figures and finding composite area. You have a few practice problems that you're going to do. You'll find those in Canvas. Uh, there's also a printed out copy on your desk that you can use to show your work. So you can figure those out, but input those answers into Canvas. Let's see how you do. And then uh, we will try to uh, go over this again if we need to with some of you individually. Uh, but hopefully all of this made sense. So we'll see you soon.